Hey YouTube, welcome to Beyond the Hype. Uh, Arcs of Bags, we're looking at it with Ice Fang, even though the recommended moveset is Dragon Breath. And it's gonna be very similar to my Beyond the Hype this morning with Steelix for one of the same reasons why you wanna run Ice Fang uh, with th like, and Thunder Fang on Steelix against the main meta. The problem's against the main meta, but then the one reason why Dragon Breath is ahead here instead of Ice Fang. So let's take a look at just the basics of it. Uh, it's ranked 52 with Dragon Breath. Its stat product is okay. Uh, 123 attack, 97 defense, really nice stamina, 151 for 1800 overall. So like a decent Pokemon, that 151 stamina means it can take like, despite the low defense, it can take some charge moves here. Dragon Ice is what makes it kind of unique. Um, so we have a lot of dragons in the meta, but none with that secondary ice typing. And that secondary ice typing is good. It's it's bad in the fact that it adds a couple weaknesses here. It adds a, three weaknesses actually, fighting, rock, and steel. So adding three weaknesses, Fighting and Rock is out there, but with that Ice typing, um, you pick up a resistance to, no, Water is Dragon, Grass is Dragon, Electric is Dragon. You pick up no resistances. Interesting. Fun, fun, fun. But what you do pick up is a Stab, same type of attack bonus, Fast Move and Charge Move, Ice Fang, and either Icy Wind or Avalanche. Now, Ice Fang got buffed, which means it is now a clone in terms of damage and damage per turn as Ice Fang. So the recommended moveset is still Dragon Breath. So what, why Dragon Breath versus Ice Fang and what's the strength of Ice Fang? So if you watch my analysis this morning on Steelix, I said Steelix against Dragon Tail just generally does not hit anything super effective except dragons. And there's no real dragons in the top 20 meta. So what you're getting is straight neutral dragon moves or resisted. So you have neutral, Clawsire, Corsola, Mandibuzz, Diggersby, Primeape, Gastron, Fraligator, Marowak, all these neutrals. And then you get down here and you get Azumarill, you get Carpink as fairies, and you get Sandslash as a steel. So you get resisted Dragon Breath moves. So you have basically 20 Pokemon in the top, 20 Pokemon, 17 neutral fast moves, three resisted. So the reason why you did Thunderfang on Steelix is because now you hit super effective against Mandibuzz, you hit super effective against Feraligator, you hit super effective against Azumarill. Same idea with Arctobax. You're hitting super effective with your ice move against Clodsire, Mandibuzz, Diggersby, Marowak, right? So there is four in the top 10 that if you changed to Ice Fang, you would now be hitting super effective against four out of the top 10. And Jump Plop, you're hitting double super effective against, right? So... Right off the bat, we're looking like, okay, that makes sense. Um, on the other end, ice is resisted by water and uh, steel. So, Fraligator, instead of doing neutral Dragon Breast, you're now doing resisted. Um, Azumarill, actually, it's both resisted because it's fairy, so that's a wash. Sand Slash is a steel as well, so that's a wash with the dragon and the ice. So it's not too bad from the just Dragon Breath perspective, so from the Ice Fang perspective. So when you go from 17 neutral Dragon Breaths and 3 resisted to like, what I say, 4 or 5 super effective and still only a few resisted, why is it that the Dragon Breath is still the recommended movesets? And it is the exact reason why Thunder Fang is not the recommended moveset on Steelix. Dragon Tail was a 3 turn move and it went down to a 2 turn move. And the shorter the move duration, the better it is for timing of your fast moves, timing of fast move optimization, timing of catching, uh, inability, like unlikeliness of them catching on you. Um, so many strengths with a short turn move. So now Dragon Breath is a one turn move, but Ice Fang is a two turn move. So basically what the Sim is saying is, despite picking up all those wins, sorry, all those super effective fast moves against the top meta Pokemon, that one turn move is still significantly better in terms of optimization for all those things that I just mentioned compared to a two turn Ice Fang. So I ran the team with Arctbex, Marowak, Glycopod, I am double to rock. That's what Marowak is for to deal with that. Um, and again, when you're gonna be have problems with um, like water Pokemon, I thought that having your own water Pokemon while you resist their move is a good idea. And then Marowak, if you're going to have problems with Steel, uh, Marowak as the ground type to deal with Steel. Um, obviously, Double Weak to Rock, Azumarill causes this team some problems. 
But let's get into it. So more Pekko on the lead. Uh, we're resisting the electric anyways, so that's great. And they finally come in with Primeape. I will chip with Dragon Claw. I do have Glycopod that can deal with this, resisting the move. So I grab a shield. The Rage Fists do come pretty quick. So be it. So here comes the first one. And they decide to just go straight close combat, um, which is interesting. It is resisted. It's still a nuke though, so it still hurts. But I'm up a shield. They obviously let it go. So now we'll probably see the more Peko again. Um, in which case, I have X Scissor. So they, yeah, they're going to have to throw because I have X Scissor, which would be super effective on the dark. So they have to dump this energy. And strength for them. I now have two things that resist electric, but none resist dark. So they will get a neutral buffed or Oh, actually, it's not buffed because they want Psychic Fangs. They'll get an ore wheel off. So I will shield that. Get the mud slap down. Come out with some energy. What do you got in the back? It is a jump bluff. So we will just chip with rock slide. And then you know where we're going here. Instead of doing neutral dragon breast, we are doing double super effective ice fangs. We are going to, to basically just delete this jump bluff. Pretty easy. So weak to fighting. So we are going to save swap our Glycopod. Um, they are staying in. I will take the first rage fist. Knowing that they're just going to boost their attack. So take the first Rage Fist, and they are not getting out. Uh, I am going straight Liquidation. x is resisted on the fighting. Uh, and they shield. So I'm like, okay, this is interesting. You're clearly a bit weak. Liquidation also has a chance to lower the defense, which we just saw there. Um, and they finally get into Malamar. And being able to do super effective, double super effective with this x is huge. Now... They, sh they recognize and shield, and I was like, oh, I think I'm going to get Psy Wave down before, so I'm just going to instant swap back into this Arctabax, um, thinking that Marowak is probably my win con. So look, superpower, that is a super effective superpower, which is a hard-hitting move, and I live. That's the strength of the Arctabax. It's got a, that um, stamina there, allows you to take those charge moves. So I'm basically coming back to Lysopod here to force them to just dump their energy, knowing that they cannot farm me down, so they're going to have to dump, and they do. And now Marowak with the shield is going to have to sweep. And oh look, an overrated Starmie. <laughs> not, not up here, not, not based on what other, every other content creator has said, but um, one Bone Club puts it in the deep red, easy shield, and a farm down with the slap. Um, so take out the Starmie. You can't leave Starmie without shields. It's too glassy. And now both of the remaining Pokemon are low. They come in just to get Mud Slapped and Bone Club down on the Primeape here. They live with one HP, so I'm going to need one more, and I get it. And then Mud Slapped down on the Malamar. Corsola. Okay, so we are going to throw... Um, these astonishes are adding up. I'm going to shield the first move because I do have Icy Wind, which will lower their attack. And they did just go straight Power Gem, which would have been super effective. So that's a good shield. Um, get the Icy Wind off. Obviously, it does not do a ton. And out comes a Primeape. And unfortunately, Primeape with a one turn fast move advantage is, and a shield advantage puts these guys in a huge uh, overall advantage. I'm baiting here because I believe that they're going to shield because they have a shield advantage and they are buffed and they do shield. So now it's like, do I just let this go or do I have to burn another shield to try and grab a shield? And I let it go and now they're two times buffed and I at best I have a neutral Marowak in here and they're already two times buffed. I don't want to take a two times buff move and this is where Primeape can kind of get out of control. Right? A shield advantage. Um, and I just had to commit to the farm down and I get it, but I'm down shields. Um, they just come in and force my energy on this Corsola and then they're just going to one shield whatever's in the back here. So that goes down and it is a Pangoro in the back, which is also going to have caused Arctabax problems. So I forget if I try and catch or I just go down here. Yeah, I just go down in the mid animation there. So we'll go down. Night Slash Lance takes me out and then I'm not going to get to a move before they get to a move here to take me out. Arctabax and Spamar Peko, again, great lead. So they will probably leave or stay in for some reason. Try and catch. They do try and catch, and they do catch successfully on Azumarill because I'm a, 
I'm a noob, apparently, and throw right when I get to the move. So again, I don't have an amazing answer for a zoom roll. Uh, so I just have to come Glycopod where my claws are neutral and their bubbles are resisted. And they'll have to do resisted liquidations and they'll do neutral play roughs. Is the best I have, unfortunately, for a zoom roll. Um, so coming in here, going to take... Eh, I may shield. I may take the move. Yeah, it doesn't matter. You can live one. And then... This will not take them out, so I'm going to have to make a decision what I want to do after this does not take them out here. So I can let this go. I could. I was supposed to say I have two options. I shield, or I just come Marowak and take the advantage there. So they come back in, more Peko, and snipe me with the Psychic Fangs. So now I'm going to definitely come in Marowak. Hopefully I can take this out before they get to an Aura Wheel, and I cannot. Um, so I'm going to shield because this move hurts. But now I'm down two shields against a, a zoom roll. But they do not get to a move and just come in and let me farm, which is nice. Because now I have, and they're double, and they have a drapeon in the back. So that drapeon just allowed me to get two bone clubs here. So there's one. Here's two. They're gonna need to take me out here, or else I'm gonna get another move off here. So. If the Aqua Tail takes me out, that'd be good for them. If not, it'll be interesting. Yeah, so Aqua Tail is super effective. Holy animation. Um, and then again, this is where Arctabax just has enough bulk. Shadow Drapion, Crunch will hurt, but not enough to take me out. And now I will get to the Dragon Claw for the win. So there's still eight minutes of battles, but I'll just talk a couple minutes about my thoughts in case you want to um, hear. Obviously, greatly, they're going to get out into something. Yes, Fairy Wind is super effective, but like, and an Aerial Ace is neutral. Okay, whatever. So, Arc's back with Ice Fang. Uh, is there play in the meta? What do I think about the one versus two? Is it is it that much of a difference? Um, I mean, the one turn, you have seen how much the one turn moves really help Pokemon. And we saw it as far back as Registeel with the lock-ons. We see it with... Um, the Dragon Breath users, we see it now with Malamar and Psy Wave, right? A bunch of Pokemon with a bunch of good moves, one-turn moves, how strong they can just be with these one-turn moves. So the question you need to ask yourself, and that I'm going to try and answer for you here is, is giving up that one to two-turn move worth doing the super effective on everything else? Because otherwise, the, the energy... And the damage is the same. So we don't even need to look at it. Like Steelix was, you needed to look from it this morning of a, yes, it's a three versus two, but it's also Dragon Tail does more damage per turn than um, Thunder Fang. Here's not, here we don't have that problem. Dragon Breath and Ice Fang are the exact same in terms of damage. So you really just need to say, is the one turn versus the two turn worth it giving up for how many super effective Pokemon, how many Pokemon you will hit super effective against at the top here and you're not gonna like the answer but it's going to come down what's in your elo range and i see this comment a lot on my videos and even other youtube videos um i'll put out a team and then people are like oh i went 0 and 10 because i i only saw this pokemon in my meta well it's like in my elo range it's like well then you need to adjust <laughs> right you need to adjust what you're seeing if I am seeing um, 500 for alligators, running with Ice Fang is not a good idea. If I'm seeing 500 Claude Sires and Marowax, running with Ice Fang is a good idea. Um, if I'm seeing, yeah, or Jump Plus or something like that. So like if you're seeing a lot of those top meta Pokemon there, uh, I think it is worth it. If you're seeing Dugong, for alligator, you know, your water type Pokemon. I mean, Azumarill's but resist both, but uh, be like your Fralligators, your Dugongs. Wall Rain may show up a bit more. Then Ice Fang is going to hurt you and limit you a lot. Sandslash is tough. Sandslash resists Dragon Breath anyways. Um, but yeah, and this, oh man, this is going to be a loss. I can already tell it's going to be a loss because Sandslash Azumarill is already like two almost core breakers for this team. So this, I don't even know the result of this, but I can probably tell you it's going to be a loss. Um, yeah, so you could, yeah, so it just depends what you're seeing in your range. 
you could like double dragon what was the poison double dragon is a very common line try to draw out like a fairy um and then punish it you could try and sneaky run that maybe ice fang has more play in limited metas um but it doesn't seem like it's one that you need to like go out of your way to use for uh, uh, yeah it just depends on what you're seeing so that is what i think about arctabax with ice fang and now we have a few minutes left of this battles but let's talk about what's next i think i already talked about like we're gonna look at digsby we're gonna look at the ice punch the buff punch users we're gonna look but look at the buffed thundershock users let me just take a quick look to see if anyone has submitted any battle battles to me if you'd like to submit some battles link in the description um I will take either league because, oh yeah, 15, we're up to 15. So that definitely means, because I think I was, I think when I deleted, um, that's an old one. That's an old one. I think I have a couple. I forgot to delete some from last season. I don't love showcasing last seasons because of buffed moves. Okay, so when I delete all the old seasons, it looks like there is two. Yep. So there's two people uh, who have submitted one with Viberel because... Uh, I just did it. I just did that the other day, so I don't know. And then one with Togi Dimaru and Glizcore, which got both got buffed. So I could look at those, uh, but I'm definitely going to showcase my own Togi Dimaru. And eh, I don't know if I'll do Glizcore, so maybe I'll showcase this from the Glizcore perspective. Mark, K, Pogo, you may be one of my people that I showcase uh, because Glizcore, I probably won't showcase it on my own. I was do Togo Dimaru because of the Thundershock user on my own, but Glizcore could be an interesting one. And then yeah, any members who want to submit and want priority, please submit link in this in the description. Um, I didn't really talk about the other two Pokemon. So I guess I should also talk about what I think the meta is going to be, which it's a little tough to figure out this early because of all the people testing out new Pokemon, right? My, my feed is spammed with people trying out. Um, I posted on Twitter as the joke, like <laughs> content creators with their different, um, different like strategies because there's Starmie was everywhere. I've seen, I've already seen Arctabax with Ice Fang, I've seen Sand Attack, uh, Glizcore, I've seen, what else is new here, Vibrail, um, so I've seen, so all those, so everyone's going to just post new things. So what is the meta going to be when the dust settles? Um, when the dust settles, I think you're going to have your regulars, Claude Sire, Diggersby, Primeape, a zoom roll seems to be everywhere. Um, done sparse stuff like that. I think those will all be meta. I think I th uh, it's tough. I think there's got to be a rise. There's has to be some grass that comes out, in my opinion. Um, like I know Claude Sire's poison and Diggersby does have fire punch now. But you still have these Zoomerals and the for alligators, and now Diggers B is a rise, and Dunsparce is still everywhere, which can only hit you with the rock type moves because Drobon is resistant on grass. I think there's got to be a grass Pokemon that rises up. I I don't think Electric again as many ground as I've seen Marowak, Diggers B, Claude Sire, with the updated rankings. With the updated rankings, there's <laughs> just taken even though there's some doubles here. Um, yeah, fine. In the top eight, let's let's get rid of the double Claude Sire and let's get rid of the double for alligator. In the top eight, there's Claude Sire, Diggersby, Gastrodon, 
and Marowak. That is four ground type Pokemon. One is a Mud Boy, so it only single resists electric, but two are just pure ground and double resists electric. So given how ground heavy this meta is, I do not expect to see a huge increase in electric Pokemon, which means that your flyers like Mandibuzz and Moltres and to a certain extent Jumpluff will have a little more freedom in my opinion. Um, I think their Primate Annihilate Fighter will still be there. I think your Grounds will be there. I think your Safe Swaps and Drapion and Fraligator will still be there. I'm just trying to think if there's any going to be anything like new. Like maybe Sand Slash. I mean, that's not new, but like maybe a bit more of those. Stunfisk, right? Stunfisk has a core break. I haven't tested Stunfisk yet. Again, I don't love Mod Bomb Discharge on it, but it spams and it's really got a nice core. It's really core breaks a lot of teams out here. Um, so I think Stunfisk should be on the rise. And then it's just going to be like your normals, like Nalamar Tox Pex. Thunderfang Steelix is at 25. Uh, I don't know. Again, like I said, it's it's a great answer now to your Zoomerals and Fraligators and your Mandibuzzes and stuff. But again, with grounds everywhere, it is so risky to run an electric type move, especially a fast type move with no real charge move uh, pressure, right? At least with like Marpeko, you can like change to dark and throw the or wheel. Um, but to have like a non stab psychic fangs and a non stab crunch with so many grounds, I think that Steelix is going to be a little tricky to play often. You could, it has play, but it just, I don't know if it's gonna be like a top option. Um, so yeah, I think it's going to be very similar. I think it's gonna be a lot of ground, some flyers to deal with that. Um, some fighters that are just neutral, and then you'll start seeing some grass type Pokemon to kind of deal with the ground. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't think these new moves significantly change the meta. So it's gonna be a lot of what is last year, with maybe a slight increase in ground this year again. Uh, but we'll see. Anyways, those are my thoughts on the meta. Let me know your thoughts on the meta. Uh, comment below, and that is basically it. So time to go play. <laughs> some more battles um maybe we'll do an electric next yeah maybe we'll look at one of the electric types maybe a double electric team like a more peko togedumaru double electric um and then something to be ground on the front let's try, let's test out something like that uh, maybe okay anyways that's it thanks for watching see you guys in the next one